Hey everyone, Anthony here, and welcome to my ultimate beginner's guide for Filmora 9 2020. This is an update slash remake for my Filmora 9 beginner's guide from 2019, and basically the intention for this video is to be higher quality and a little more thorough. There will be timestamps in the description down below for all of the different sections, so if you're looking for something specific, you can skip right ahead to where you need to be. However, if you just downloaded Filmora 9 and you have no idea where to get started, then you will probably find it helpful to watch the entire video. Whatever you choose to do, I hope you find this video useful, so let's get started. Filmora 9 is a video editor intended for beginning to intermediate users. It was the video editor that I used right after graduating from iMovie, and I edited a bunch of my early YouTube videos with it, some of which you can see on screen right now. Now, to be clear, Filmora 9 is not the be-all end-all of video editors. Once you get more advanced, you will probably need to upgrade to something a little more capable. I personally use Premiere Pro from Adobe for most of my videos, and Premiere is the gold standard for YouTube filmmakers. However, Advanced editors like Premiere or Final Cut or DaVinci Resolve, just throw any name you want in there. A lot of those more professional editors can be really complex and intimidating for a beginner. So for people who are just starting out, Filmora 9 offers great features in a shiny and easy to use package. So let's open it up and dive right in. When you first open Filmora 9, this screen is going to be the first thing that pops up. Over to the right, you have your project library, which is where you can select any recent projects. And as you can see, I already have one in there right now. Then right over here, you have the option to select your project aspect ratio. By default, it's set to 16 by nine, which is the standard YouTube video layout. One by one, as you can see, is for Instagram. It basically sets your video into a convenient little box. Nine by 16 is for portrait videos. So if you want to edit video that you shot with your phone for say an Instagram story, you can do that. Four by three is an older aspect ratio that's not really used anymore, so you can ignore that. And finally, 21 by nine is basically just extra wide, and it's actually the same aspect ratio that most movies are shown in at the theater. But for this tutorial, I'm going to just keep it at 16 by nine, and then I'm going to go ahead and hit new project. So here we are in the main interface. It's pretty straightforward, and if you've used any editor before, you'll be able to start getting around right away. There are three main sections, We've got the timeline right here, and then we've got the playback window where you can view your edits, and then the media library, which is where you'll import and organize all of your clips. Above the media library, you'll see a bunch of different tabs, and this is where you'll find all of the good stuff. Underneath audio, you'll find a bunch of music tracks provided by Filmora that you can use in your videos. They also provide some basic sound effects if you need them, so like chickens. <laughs> Unfortunately, this library isn't the highest quality out there, but it's definitely enough to get you started, and there's also a folder where you can store any of your own music that you may have downloaded from other sites. Underneath titles, you'll find a bunch of different text templates, including end credits right here. They're all fully customizable, so you can change the fonts, colors, and even the animation. Underneath transitions, there is a very, very generous selection of, well, transitions. Even Premiere Pro doesn't come with this many. They range from simple and professional to pretty wacky if I'm being honest, but there's a huge variety of them for pretty much any use you can think of. Effects is the most interesting tab in here. We've got three main subfolders. There's filters, and then there's overlays, and then utility. You'll find everything from Instagram style filters, to lens flares, to glitches, VHS distortion, black and white. There's way too many in here to go over all of them, and I haven't even used all of them myself, but there is a lot of great stuff in here that can be used very creatively, so I highly recommend that you mess around in here and see what you like. Underneath elements, you'll find a bunch of what are basically stickers, so we've got emojis, badges, even logos. Finally, under split screen, you'll find a bunch of different options for putting up to six videos side by side. Now, something that you may have noticed while I was going through all of these tabs is this giant film stocks button in the corner. This is a link to Filmora's online effects store where they have things like extra title animations or even blockbuster packs with explosions and muzzle flashes and all of that good stuff. It does cost extra money, unfortunately, I think it's a monthly subscription, but if what you need isn't already loaded into Filmora, Filmstocks is a worthwhile site to check out. Alright, so my objective right now is to basically string together a bunch of clips and use a bunch of effects to show you how they can be used. I'm not going to put together anything super fancy or award winning, but enough to show you what editing in Filmora looks like. 
All right, so I have my folder of sample footage open in another monitor, and I can basically just select all of it and drag it into the media library. And I'm gonna talk more about these proxies in a minute, so you can just click yes. And then on some of the higher resolution footage, for example, this is a 4K clip from a drone, you can see this little circle moving right here, and that basically just means it's generating proxies so that this is easier to work with. Underneath the import button right here, you can see a few more specialized options. These include importing directly from a camera, assuming it's plugged into the computer, or even downloading videos straight from social media. Underneath record, there are also options to just straight up record a video using your webcam or your screen, and that way you can just shoot your video and then get your footage into Filmora right away. But in any case, once you do have all of your media clips in the library, you will want to start reviewing them, so you can just double click them. I can scrub through the clip to see what I like, and then there are these in and out markers so that I can make a selection. And then once I have a portion of my clip selected, I can just grab it from here and place it into my timeline. And then to watch it back, I can hit play right here, or I can also hit space, which is a little faster in my opinion. But before we go any further, I'm going to take a quick detour and talk about smooth playback. Video editing is an intensive process. Filmora 9 is designed to be easy on your computer. In fact, the minimum requirements list only 4 gigabytes of RAM, but that can only go so far. If your computer doesn't have the greatest specs, you might notice upon playback that your video is choppy and slow. I was there once, and trust me, it's painful. Fortunately, there are a few solutions built right into Filmora 9 that can make the process go along a bit more smoothly. The first one is right underneath the playback window, and it basically allows you to lower the playback resolution so that your computer can process it a little bit easier. Secondly, you can enable proxies under Files, Preferences, and Performance. Proxies are basically lower resolution preview files that are generated if your video exceeds the selected resolution. By default, it's set to 4K, which is why proxies were being generated for the drone clip earlier in the video, but if you lower the resolution, you can see that proxies are generated for all of the other videos as well. Finally, as a last resort, there is the render button. Quick warning, if you're running an older version of Filmora 9, the render button might not be there. Back when Filmora 9 first came out as an update to Filmora 8, a lot of people weren't happy about the fact that there was no render button, but if you're running the latest version, the render button is back for good. Once you have your footage in the timeline and it's playing back smoothly, you may find that you need to fiddle with it a little bit more, whether that's trimming it down or making it a little longer, and there are a couple of ways that you can do this. The first one is by using the split tool, which is the scissor icon in the toolbar right here. If I click on it, you can see that it splits my clip in half wherever the playhead is located. Another thing that I can do is just grab the ends of a clip and drag it backwards or forwards depending on what I need. Then, if I need to get really precise edits, I can resize the timeline by clicking the top and dragging my mouse. You can see that this extends the amount of the clip visible to us, and this allows you to really get in there and cut out individual frames if you need to. But once I'm done in here, I can just grab the top of my timeline and drag it back to a normal size. A good YouTube video will generally have some type of background music. I'm going to go through the library and find a track that is fairly low key, nothing too energetic. And then once I have a song that I like, I can just drag it down underneath my footage. But now if I add in a clip of me speaking and I play it back, you can hear that the music is a little too loud and pretty much overpowers my voice. The solution is to just grab this solid line on the audio track and gently drag it downwards. And we can also raise the volume on the audio track with my voice. Something else that Filmora allows you to do is add audio keyframes. Now, I have a dedicated video on this if you want to check it out, but it basically allows you to dip the volume levels of your music track in and out, so if you want it louder on one section of the video but quieter on another, you can have the volume fade in and out accordingly. Finally, if I go on over to the audio mixer, you can see that there is an actual legitimate surround sound mixer. So if you layer multiple sound effects on top of each other like I have right here, then you can have them come from multiple different directions and it's all visualized for you right here, which is really cool. All right, let's say that you want to add a title to your video. So let's head on back to the title tab and find one that I like. I kind of like this one and I can just drag it down into my timeline and place it on the track above my clip. 
if you double click on the title, you can see this box pop up right here. And this is where you can not only enter in your text, but you can also change things like the position, font, and animation. So I'm just gonna type in some stuff real quick. And then I can reposition it. If you click on this button that says advanced, you get access to a bunch of other tools. For example, you can adjust the timing of the different elements down here. You can also add things like a shadow to your text. And this might not always be necessary, but if your background is chaotic, a drop shadow can help it stand out a little better. I'm gonna run through some of these tools real quick. You can blur your text, add a border, adjust the spacing in between the letters. You can also change the font and there's a nice selection of fonts up here. There are different animations, so like typewriter, cinema style, or you can have no animation at all. It's your choice. And if you like what you have, you can hit save as custom and it will save your text settings for you so that you can use them in any other project that you want. All right, so now let's add some transitions. My preference when using a transition is to use one of the simple ones so that it's not super distracting. For example, this one which is shift zoom, hey everyone, that's obviously a bit much. Something simple like a round zoom or a dissolve would work just fine. You also couldn't go wrong with some sort of speed blur. Then up here we can adjust the timing of the transition or we can just select it right here and drag it to shorten it. I generally like to keep my transitions fairly quick at around half a second or so because any longer and it still does manage to be distracting. You can't go wrong with keeping it quick and simple but of course it always depends on what works for your footage or the project and sometimes you won't even need transitions at all. If you're enjoying this video so far and you're finding it helpful, please consider checking out the rest of my channel. I make short films, I review filmmaking gear, and of course, I make editing tutorials just like this one. So if you're interested in any of that, consider subscribing. But yeah, back to the video. Something else that I want to talk about are all of the controls available for your video clips. If you double click on a clip, you can see this panel pop up right here. Transform is basically so that you can resize or rotate your clip. You can also move it around the frame. Compositing is where you can adjust things like opacity, which is basically just the transparency of the clip. And you can usually ignore blending mode unless you're working with special effects. There's also a stabilization option, which is similar to Warp Stabilizer in Premiere, in that it analyzes for shakiness and then does its best to remove it. Chroma key is where you've got all of your green screen controls, and most people know what a green screen is or at least have a vague idea. It's used for all sorts of special effects and background replacements, so if you want to get into that, Filmora has you covered. Lens correction. Sometimes a specific camera or lens model will have noticeable distortion. For example, on older GoPros, a lot of which are listed here. So if that's something you need to fix, this panel has you covered. Drop shadow is nothing special except that you can add a shadow around the edges of your clip. And finally, Auto Enhance. To be honest, you should stay away from this one as it generally just over sharpens the clip and makes it look worse. So yeah. Something that can help take your video to the next level is the Advanced Color Correction Panel. So I'm just going to double click on the clip and I'm gonna move up here to color. And then I'm going to hit Advanced. All right, so I have this clip that needs a little bit of correction and I'm gonna walk you through how I do that. The first thing that I'm noticing is the greenish tint on my skin, and obviously that's to be expected since I am filming underneath a tree, but I can still fix it and make it look a little better. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is head on over to the white balance section. I can move the tint toward magenta, or I can increase the temperature to make it a little warmer. You don't wanna go too far with either of these, so I'm just gonna leave it at about four. I can also go down to the HSL panel, which basically allows me to have control over individual colors. So I can increase the saturation on my skin, I can decrease the green, I can change the hue if I want to something more bluish or even yellow. Something that this picture could use is a little more contrast, and I could just go to color and use the contrast slider, but I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to go on down to light, and I'm going to use the shadow slider. The overexposed background is pretty much unfixable, but I can try to improve it a little bit. I could lower the highlights. I could also tone down the whites a little bit, although that would make my face look a little weird. Finally, as a finishing touch, I can head on over to the 3D LUT panel, and this basically just has a bunch of preset looks based on different movies, and I can cycle through these and see if there's anything that works for my clip. I usually find that Walking Dead looks good on just about anything, so that's what I'm gonna use. Of course, I don't have to use any of these, but it's still fun. Finally, I can go up here and get a before and after comparison. Obviously, this clip isn't perfect, the main problem being this overexposed background, but it still looks significantly better than the original. If I want to, I can of course save it as a preset, 
and I'm just gonna hit OK. Hopefully that gave you a pretty good idea on how to get started with advanced color correction, but now it's time to export. Now, what you see when you first go to export is going to depend. What you will most likely see, especially if you just click the free download button on Filmora's website, is this page with all of the different purchase options listed. If you choose to go with free, you will get a watermark on your footage, and there is no way to get rid of it other than to straight up buy one of these licenses. On the other hand, if you did purchase a license or a subscription, but you're getting this page anyway, usually that just means you're not logged in, like in my case, and you can just log into your account right here. Once you have all of that sorted out, however, you will be able to export your videos normally without a watermark, and there are lots of different options depending on what's right for you. If we go up here, you'll see that there's even an option to upload it directly to YouTube straight from within Filmora. All you have to do is sign into your YouTube account, and this is really helpful, especially if you want to streamline your process. But yeah, once your video is exporting, you're pretty much done. And that was my ultimate beginner's guide for Filmora 9 2020. If you watched it all the way through, thank you very much. I hope you found it helpful. Feel free to check out the description for additional information on me and my channel. But in any case, thank you for watching, and goodbye.